My name is Jorrend van der Wiel and I work as a security researcher for Kaspersky Lab. On this slide you will see some of my colleagues, but in the middle there is one big guy. And that guy is Eugene Kaspersky. And he is important not just because he is the CEO, but also because he will come back later in the story. So we are a team of about 40 plus people all over the world investigating the latest cyber threats. And one of the threats we investigated was Carbonac. And that threat started with a phone call. So we were called, or actually emailed, um, from somebody who we knew. He was uh, working in the Ukraine for a big bank. And he told us, guys, we have a problem. Can you please come to see what's going on? And we said, oh man, going all the way to Kiev, it's, pff, it's far, it's not so easy. Can't you just say what's going on? He said, no, 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 you guys have to come. Trust me, you have to come. So we were like, okay, well, we will go. So we went there uh, to Kiev and he took us to a room and the room was the video room of all the CCTV equipment. And there he showed us a movie. And in that movie, you see at the bottom right of the screen that it is three o'clock in the night and the guy comes walking with a big jacket and a hoodie. So he puts over the hoodie over his head, he wraps the scarf around his neck so you do not see his face, and he opens up his jacket. He gets a card out. And with that card, he swipes so he can actually enter the bank. And as soon as he enters the bank, all the ATMs start to blink. And they start to dispatch cash. So he opens up his big black sports bag, puts money in there, and continues until the ATM is empty. And then he goes to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And about one million dollars later, he walks out of the bank. Without even touching the ATM, he was able to steal quite some money. Now we thought that this was another version of Tupkin. And Tupkin is a type of malware that uh, you can install on an ATM. You can go on eBay, you can buy a key. Usually those ATMs have standard keys. You can open up the ATM, you can insert a USB or a CD-ROM drive, you reboot the ATM, and at that point the ATM is infected with Tupkin. Now Tupkin also works between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the night. Uh, you go there, you enter a secret code, then you will see a challenge. You text the challenge to your boss, he will give you the response. You enter the response on the pin pad, and then you are basically in God mode. You can choose from which cassette you want the money. So as you can see, this, these type of attacks, they were looking quite similar. So we asked for all the hard drives of the ATMs and we investigated them and investigated them and more investigation. But we couldn't find anything except a weird VPN configuration. So we thought, well, okay, whatever. We don't know shit like this happens. But then, a few months later, Again, three o'clock in the night, we get a phone call from one of our colleagues saying, yeah, you know, you really have to call this number. Wait, wait, who is this? Who do I have to call? No, 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 just call it. It's really important. So, okay, well, we will call the number. So we dialed and on the other end of the phone was the most stressed out guy we ever talked to. And he said, just said, get your ass over here. Okay, but I'm in the bed, it's three o'clock in the night. Where is here? Yeah, come to this and this bank, now. So, okay, so we put our clothes on, we go to the bank and we ask, what's the problem? And he said, our domain controller is sending data to China. Now the domain controller is the most important server in your network. And if, if that server is sending data to China, yeah, there might be something malicious going on. So we were put behind the terminal and we decided to investigate starting a process explorer and we found a malicious process running. So we were looking at the process and we saw that vnc.dll was injected into that process. Now remember, what is the situation? It was about four o'clock in the night in, a in one of the biggest banks in Russia. The bank has been hacked and you see that VNC is installed on the computer you are investigating. Could it be that those guys are watching what we were doing? Well, 
we wanted to find out. So we opened up Word and we decided to write something. So we wrote hello and we waited and we waited and then suddenly hello. So indeed they were watching what we were doing and you know how these conversations go. We will catch you, no you won't catch us, you, you won't catch us, no we will catch you and poof they were gone. But the bank they were still infected in the middle of the night. So what do you do then? Well, you can do two things. You can create some signatures for your antivirus product and push them out so that the malware will be found and removed. But not all the computers had antivirus installed. So we just created a very simple batch script that removed the malware from all the computers and that was ran a couple of times until we knew for sure that the bank was clean. So the bank was safe. But the world wasn't. So we decided to investigate and investigate and we found out that this attack was actually called Carbonac and that there were many other banks being affected with Carbonac. Now remember Eugene from the beginning of the story? He went to a conference, the Interpol conference in Singapore I think, and there he was talking with somebody from Europol and you know CEOs they like to tell what uh, they are doing and Eugene told his story and the guy from Europol said wait this is so important, you should come to Europol, to our headquarters in The Hague and present about this so that the banks can protect themselves. So he said, okay, well, we can do that. So we flew in some people to The Hague and one of my colleagues was presenting there in a room. The room was fully packed with many important people from many big banks in Europe. And my colleague, he started to give the presentation. And you know, he's the type of guy that gets really enthusiastic when it gets technically more advanced. And you saw that the more enthusiastic he got, the more nervous the people in the room became. Well, we handed our report to those banks so they could protect themselves. And that was it. Well, of course, not entirely, because we also had to investigate the malware. And how does it work? Because how does Carbonac actually work? Well, Carbonac gets installed on the computer by sending a Word document to, for example, so let's say the event manager in the bank. Now the Word document contains an exploit and as soon as the event manager in the bank opens up the Word document, because the description in the email is, uh, we're organizing a very important event, could you please stop by and have a booth, you could gain so many potential clients. Uh, for a description, please see the attached document. So of course, the event manager opens up the Word document and poof, the malware is downloaded and installed on the computer in the bank and the attackers have their first point of entry within the bank. But of course, the first computer is not so useful. So you elevate your privileges and you want to get the password of the administrator. How can you do that? Well, very simple. You write an email to IT and you say that this computer is so, so slow. Could IT please come by to check what's going on? So IT comes by, they log in with their administrative passwords and boof. Because they installed a the keylogger, they have the password of the administrator. And that password can also be used on the domain controller. And when they are on the domain controller, they can do whatever they want. They can go to all kinds of PCs. And the interesting thing about Carbonac was that there was not one way to get money out of the bank, but there were several ways. So one way was, as I told in the beginning, to control the ATMs remotely. Another way was to enter data directly into the SWIFT system. So there were money transfers going out to other countries. Another way is to manually increase the balance of some money mules. So for example, if they have $1,000, you make it $10,000. The money mules go to the ATM, they take $9,000 and their original amount remains the same. And the last way, and that was actually kind of funny, is they found the backend system to create accounts and they created accounts for money mules. And they gave every money mule, say, 35 rubles or 35 ruble cent, I don't know, but like a very low amount. And then when all the money mules were there, they decided to manually adjust the balance of the money mules. So what did they do? Their query was something like, 
update balance to 10 million where balance is 35. So suddenly people who had 35 rubles had 10 million rubles. Now that is interesting, but not only the money mules, because some innocent people who had happened to have 35 rubles on their account suddenly had millions of rubles on their account. Now, of course, the money mules came and they took all the money from the ATMs. And these are the four ways that the Carbonac gang stole money from banks. So, one of the questions we often get is, well, what do you actually do against this attack? Well, we decided uh, to team up with the Dutch police because one of the things about Holland, it is famous for, um, maybe for its beer, Heineke, flowers, I guess, um, also for the wheat for many foreigners. But we also have a very, very good in IT infrastructure, which means there are a lot, a lot, a lot of hosting companies in the Netherlands. And those hosting companies might host a Carbonac Commander Control Server. But how do we find these Carbonac Commander Control Servers? Well, there are two ways. You can find a malware sample, and you can see where the malware is connecting to. And then you have a Commander Control Server, or you can do something else. Well, we got an image of one server, and we decided to analyze the code, and we saw that they made a very small implementation mistake in their code. Which means if we send a very specific request to a, a server on the internet, we will get a very specific reply. So that way we identify a Carbonac Commander Control Server. So if we find a malware sample connecting to a Commander Control Server and we send that message and we get that reply, boom, we're done. But we can also take it one step further. What about if we scan the whole internet in two days and do that request on all the servers all over the internet and analyze those replies, then we can find the latest Carbonac command and control server. Now remember the story that I was telling in the beginning that, um, one, of my, that one of my colleagues was presenting at Europol? Well, there was one bank uh, that got really, really nervous because they thought they had been hit. And on that day, our internet scan finished and we found out that there was actually a Carbonac Command and Control Server located in the Netherlands. So we called the police and we asked them, could you please seize the server because we're working with you in this investigation? And the police said, well, we will call you back. And they did. They called back about half an hour later and they said, okay, two things. Uh, one, we will seize a server, and two, if you do an internet scan that takes two days, start it on Friday, so we have the results on Monday, and we don't need to work on Friday afternoon, because on Friday afternoon, nobody is in the office. Anyway, the police seized the server, and what we found out there is that was Carbonac was much bigger than we initially thought, because it was targeting the Ukraine and Russia, but on that server we also saw that they were targeting Asia, uh, I think even Bangladesh and some other countries. So there was much more to Carbonac than, again, than we originally thought. Well, with this story we came out a while ago during the Security Analyst Summit, and at that point Carbonac was not so active anymore. But we saw that all the command and control servers that were active, they stopped. And for a while, Carbonac disappeared. But they are back. Uh, they came back and we think that they are still running. So the battle is not over. We hope that one day, together with the police, uh, those guys will be arrested and the robbing of banks will stop. And one of the questions I also always get is, what can banks do against this attack? Well, it's very simple. If the banks would have updated their Microsoft Word software or their office, they would not have been hacked uh, because it used a well-known vulnerability. The second thing is train in awareness. Uh, I know it's very difficult. I was talking to another bank. They said, yeah, we spend all this money on an awareness training. One month later, we send a phishing email and still 85% of the people click on the phishing email. So it's not always so effective, but then again, 15% didn't click. Uh, another thing, 
you can do is turn on behavioral detection because it will find this attack because it does all these malicious things like process injection, etc., etc. So if you have a behavioral component in your antivirus, turn it on. And if you follow these three steps, then the chance that you will become a victim of Carbonac as a bank is much, much smaller. So as you can see, the banks could have done some very simple things to prevent this attack. Now, if you don't want to become a victim of Carbonac, or in general, if you don't want to become a victim of cybercrime, do exactly the same thing. Don't click on any suspicious emails. Always update your software. And if you have an AV installed, make sure the behavioral detection is turned on. And when you do that, the chance that you will become a victim is much, much smaller.